We had some very special news today. If you guys know, da 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 da. And we have been waiting for this moment for a very long time. Of course, if you are not an investor, uh, you would probably think, Alfonso, you're crazy. This sounds like bad news. I'm like, whoa, this is, this is crazy. Everyone is scared. Everyone is scared. This is the time that I've been waiting for as an investor. But guys, it's hunting season, hunting season. We had some very special news today. If you guys know, da 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 And we have been waiting for this moment for a very long time. Of course, if you are not an investor, uh, you would probably think, Alfonso, you're crazy. This sounds like bad news. Uh, very similar to back in April of 2020, I, I got on a, on a call with everyone here uh, including, and this is why it's, I'm, I'm putting this up on my, my YouTube channel uh, as well. So it's going live on the YouTube channel as well. Because I got on a call like this back in April 2020. And I said, guys, it's hunting season, hunting season. And if you remember, if we go back to, to um, March of 2020, um, everyone, everyone was kind of uh, confused. There was a lot of confusion in the marketplace. People didn't know what was going on. Um, a lot of people were were scared. Uh, as investors, we were scared. We didn't know what we were going to do. Uh, April first for uh, for a lot of investors, in especially in the multifamily space, it was like judgment day. And April first came, and because of all the the work that we did throughout, uh, you know, between March. 15th all the way to March 30th. It was like we were calling people. We were calling people making sure everyone everyone was okay uh, April 1st came and we were 98% collected and I remember this feeling of relief that came that came over me and then April 2nd I was taking a shower because that's where I do my best thinking and I remember waking up and I was thinking like whoa this is this is crazy. Everyone is scared. Everyone is scared. And you know, if 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 you remember the feeling back back in April of 2020, there was a lot of confusion. Uh, people were uh, people were were scared, and everyone was kind of you know uh, you know heading for shelter. You know, and just you know buckling down and and hunkering down and just saying we're going to wait it out we're going to wait it out and at that point in time i said this is the time that i've been waiting for as an investor and between april for april 2nd all the way to august 1st is when we took the most action the most action in the history of our company and we were out there, we were doing discovery calls, walkthroughs. I mean, people were people were just killing us online. My YouTube channel, people were on my YouTube channel and they were like, how could you? How could you be out there, you know, uh, buying real estate? We're going through uh, a pandemic. I said, I don't know, guys, it's what I do, right? And all of that real estate, you know, millions and millions of dollars of that real estate that I bought between April to August, all doubled in price. In fact, I was able to sell a lot of that real estate on the market right at the very height. So now I am cash positive and I, now we can go into a, a different position. We can now go hunting because as of, and by the way, we were waiting, we were waiting for this moment for the past year. You know, we were like, okay, because, you know, if you look at, <clears throat> if you look at uh, where we were at back in, even even back in 2007, where um, interest rates were were kind of, you know, they were low, but you know they were they were going they were on their way up, right? And then here, you know, on the way up, we knew we knew in 2019, okay, we knew that there was going to be a correction, okay, and 
understanding the market and understanding market cycles and understanding how everything operates in real estate you just have to look at the data guys because we were expecting for for interest rates to keep climbing this is what we were expecting and what happened was 2020 we got hit with COVID COVID and so this created uh, an art of the, this created an alternate universe is what it, it, it is what happened. This is an alternate u- universe where instead of the interest rates continuing to, to, to increase, creating a situation where we, we're, we're, we're pushed into a recession because that's exactly what the government wants right now. They want to push us into a recession. We ended up uh, they, we, they're like, oh no, now we have to print money print money over here and and we're going to reduce the interest rates so interest rates came falling down over here to record lows record lows record lows and they've kept it they kept it that way for two years okay now the objective okay was to create a stimulus and they achieved exactly what they were looking for right this here the money the money was flowing baby the money was flowing cheap money people were refining their house like there was no tomorrow and so back in 2022 they're like okay we're going to do another hike it was 50 basis points 0.50 then 0.50 and what happened was people were still making dumb decisions right people were still buying it and, and inflation is still running rampant and so now they're here they're like okay guys the the jig is up okay and if you see what's been going on in the marketplace where you know the cost of living has doubled but no one can find someone to work that should tell you that doesn't make any sense how is the cost of living living doubling and no one can find someone to work right people you can't hire people because no one wants to work well the reason is that for the past two years for the past two years people have been living have been living their best life you know how i know it's on it, they hashtag it if you had if you go hashtag living my best life 2021 you you're gonna see all of the people sitting beside the pool they're sitting beside their rvs they bought a cottage we're gonna take some money back and we're gonna go on vac- we're gonna go on vacation we're gonna we're gonna take the summer off and so nobody was working and they're using their houses and as, as an atm and this is what's creating a, a big part of inflation because money was printed and it was injected into the marketplace which is creating as uh, infl- it's creating inflation and so inflation rate okay now he, this is where uh, some of these the, the some of these uh, stats I will have to say I disagree okay because they're saying it's like not eight or nine percent inflation rate and I'm gonna call BS I'm gonna call BS on that I'm gonna say it's more like 16 percent okay but you know what I'm just a I'm just a guy right this is all just my opinion you don't have to follow my opinion I'm just a guy over here uh, you know uh, just sharing my thoughts okay but if you see this the inflation actually as a result of, uh, of, of, of COVID it was like lower lower lo- the lowest ever in history and then they started and then it, it, it's in alignment with the printing of money and we're so here it would, let's say April April 2020 this is where your 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 friend the godfather okay this is where I started taking massive action okay and this is what you're gonna see if you get in, 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 a, in two months from now you're gonna see a chart okay of home sales across North America and you're gonna see this you're gonna see a big drop in the next two months okay now I don't I don't anticipate that there's gonna be a housing crash there's not gonna be a real estate crash I think we're headed more into a stable market but if you see as 
as they're increasing the, the bank rates, right now it's not doing anything up to, uh, about inflation. And so if, if inflation keeps running rampant, you're going to see the bank will start to increase their rates more and more and more until they stabilize it. And if you see back from 20, uh, January 20, uh, 2020, 2010, you see kind of where we were coming out of that last recession back in 08. And you see where inflation was. It, they, it was they were holding it steady between 2 and 3% as we started to, you know, kind of like balance out. And then... Um, in, in 14, this is when they started to print more money again, right? They, they started to um, drop the, the, the interest rates. And inflation kind of, if you see, it mimics, it follows the, the interest rates. And so by doing this, what they were expecting, is, and this is what they're expecting to happen, is for this line to kind of start, we need to create deflation. Now, here's the problem. The problem is that we have a supply chain issue, okay? Supply chain. Supply chain issue, okay? Now, the supply chain, you won't see, you won't see the supply chain here, right? Because we didn't have a supply chain issue. But you cannot, you cannot put the, the world on pause for two years and and not expect consequences, okay? And so what happens is there's no supply, right? There's a high demand for things, but there's no supply. And so what happens is that the costs of goods are gonna go through the roof. They're looking at the interest rates, okay? But there's also supply chain. If the, the car dealership used to have um, 5,000 cars, and now they only have 1,000, they still need to generate the same income, and so naturally, the per car, the prices will go up, okay? So I don't anticipate inflation to, to go down. I, I don't anticipate for that to happen. What I do anticipate to happen is that it might, it might stabilize the inflation, okay? And that, it, it, that's good news, right? That's good news. That, that means that they have it under control, and when you start to stabilize the, 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 the you're going to stabilize the, the, the inflation rate. And then that mixed in with new supply into the marketplace, right? And then the interest rates, if they do another couple hikes on the interest rates, what you're going to see is the, the, the family at home realizing, oh, no, we have to go back to work, right? There's no more, you know, we can't. We can't do this, right? And so, honey, maybe you should get a second job, a third job, and then everyone's going to go back into the workforce, okay? And so what, what they're hoping happens, and so, by the way, this is just speculation, but I want to remind you guys, I want to remind you guys, back, and look at this. This is my YouTube channel. You go back two years ago, April of 2020, there's this video impact on the market where I told you exactly what was going to happen. I told you this, like, it's almost like I can't even, it's like I'm no, Nostradamus, Nostradamus, Nostradamus. Uh, I, I go back to that video and, I, and I'm actually predicting what's happening right now. Now, I'm not saying this to brag, but I'm just saying that I look at, market trends because I was in the, the, I was, I started my business during a recession back in the 90s. I was in the recession back in 2001. I was, I was part of the recession in 2008. I, 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 I was there when it started to slow down in 2016. I was there in 2020. So I've been through this multiple, multiple times. And so let me see here. Do I have that here? Okay. So here, here, and we're going to open up for questions in just a moment. But like, I, I wanted to, to, to kind of share with you. Let me see. Let me just, can I add one? <clears throat> I got to add a sheet here. Okay. So we, we understand how 
the market is doing, it does this. This is a market cycles, okay? And if you go back up here, 2019, we, we already anticipated, everyone in real estate, we knew that there was going to be, we're going to move, we were moving into a stable market, okay? But, you know, for whatever reason, right, what happened, and this is like the altern, alternate universe, in 2020, in 2020, April of 2020, actually, it's going to be more like this, okay? It's going to be more like 2020 over here, 2020, and then April, April 2020. And if you guys remember, you know, we jumped on here. We were on this, you know, uh, uh, like we were, I, you know, every time something happens in the market, I jump on here and we, we want to talk about it. We got to talk about it as investors. But April 2020, they talked about, well, what's going to be the recovery? Because that was a crash. Believe it or not, we had a market crash because there was no sales. It just went like down, it, it, it went down to zero. And so they talked about the V recovery, they talked about a W recovery, they talked about an L recovery, so meaning, so it's just gonna dip and it's gonna go back to normal, okay? It's gonna dip, it's gonna go back to normal, and then it's gonna dip again, it's gonna go back to normal, or is it gonna dip, it's gonna, is it gonna dip and it's gonna stay stagnant for a while, okay? So we didn't know what was gonna happen, but it was a check mark. It was a check mark because it went boom. Where, where we went, we never thought ever this would happen. Not even me, right? I knew there was an opportunity. I knew there was an opportunity, but I didn't know that, you know, this was here, like I would say here, this is like, August, let's talk about August. So this little window of opportunity, this little window of opportunity, only a few people saw this window. And then everything just went right through the roof. Incredible. People make millions. My students, every, I mean, I created so many millionaires just by doing this content, by just telling people, hey guys, over here, you gotta take action. That's what we're waiting for. You know, this is, this is what you've been waiting for your whole entire real estate career. Now, when we, were, when we were up here, we knew that because they printed money, money's being printed like crazy. It's called quantitative easing. We know that the only way to stop inflation, the only way to stop inflation is by increasing internet, uh, interest rates. And so when you increase in interest rates, people... Because when when you when you uh, reduce interest rates, you go through this expansion, okay? And this expansion, it's easy. Everyone has money. That's what the stimulus did. When you print money and you inject it into the market, you see what happens. They historical amounts of money were printed during this time, never before. I mean, people were getting paid to just sit at home. All of this money had to be printed and injected into the market now people did what they're supposed to do they took the money and they spent it mission accomplished we got through 2020 2021 but now here comes let's bring the horses back into the barn okay because everyone living their hashtag living their best life and they forget that this money was printed and there's going to be consequences at some point okay and so when you increase interest rates, okay, when you, when you go to a point over here, you increase interest rates, you stabilize the market. You stabilize the market and you start to decline, right? So you stabilize and then you start to decline. And once you get to, once then you get to here, recovery, okay, let's reduce the interest rates and then let's stimulate the market. And so you have a balanced, you know, market cycles, you know, recessions, uh, you know, expansion, recession, stabilize. These are all part of market cycles. And so what can you do now? What can you do now? And that's what I want to kind of get to because hunting season is back, my friends. And this, this is why I'm so excited. And I want to give you some things to think about and to leave you with to get you guys going, get you guys excited about what is the next 
chapter in your real estate investment career, okay? And so here's the first thing that you need to realize. It will take time for sellers to adjust to where we are in the market, okay? Right now, they're still used to those big prices. You know, they're still used to the, the overinflated prices. It's going to take about a month or two for sellers to start realizing, wait a minute, um, I'm actually out to lunch here and no one's going to buy my property at this price because, you know, you underwrite it, you put a 6% interest rate, nothing makes sense anymore. And so it will take some time for sellers to adjust, okay? But this is what's going to happen. People that don't have to sell, people that don't have to sell will pull their deals off the market, okay? So I had a variety of different deals on the market and I sold some at the very peak. Now as interest rates start to to uh, you know to to go back up again, I'm pulling my mark my property off the market. I don't need to sell anymore. I'm no longer in the selling of real estate business, okay? That was me this year, like early this year and the end of last year, I was okay, let's let's cash in at the very height of the market. But I am no longer in the selling business. Now I'm going back into the marketplace and I'm going to go back to hunting season, okay? So it's going to take time, but the people that really don't, are not motivated to sell are actually going to pull their properties off the market. And this is exactly what I shared with you back in April of 2020. Back in April of 2020, I said, look, if you, if, if you don't have to sell your property, you are pulling your property off the market. Okay? What does this mean? It means you don't have to filter through so many properties you actually get to see, you're actually, the inventory on the market right now are the people, or I would say in the next two months, are going to be the people that actually want, are wanting to sell, right? And so you can, you can shift, it, it kind of like pre-qualifies the people for you. And so inventory will increase. Not only do, are you going to have the people that are trying to sell on the market, so the true people, not people like me that are just trying to cash out at the very top of the market, but real true sellers, people that actually want to sell. Baby boomers, people that are retiring, people that are sick of dealing with tenants, people that are trying to get out of the landlord business, people that are divorced, people that you know got sick, people that, that, that are going through disaster, people that are going through death. All of these reasons, now you get to see the true people that are selling on the market. So there's the inventory will increase. You'll start to see uh, properties on the market. People are, are, are going to, you know, people are trying to list their properties or whatever they're trying to do. You know, the, you'll see that the, it'll stay longer. DOM, days on market, will be longer, okay? And then we are going into a stable market. We're going to go into a stable market for the short term, okay? Here's why I believe we're going into a stable market, because I still believe that <clears throat> there's other asset classes that are going to take beatings, stock market, gold, crypto. I think those markets are going to take beatings where people are still going to want to preserve their capital, okay? Now, I think we're going into a stable market. Once once we 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 uh, we you know we we'll go through another cycle of stabilization, maybe uh, some decline, maybe maybe the government is going to play with the with with the interest rate. So, what we anticipate that's going to happen, because you I think I think with the the hundred basis points, I think the uh, the governments. By the way, I don't have a crystal ball, but the governments are going to realize we went too far because we'll feel the effects of this in fall. Okay. And so you will start to see a recession. Once we start to see a recession, then I, I'm, I actually anticipate that the, the governments are going to reduce the interest rate again to try to balance things out. So then it will become a stable market for a while. And, and ultimately, it, it, uh, sellers will become flexible, which is my favorite word, flexibility meaning they're willing to negotiate and work with you in many ways. 
And this is the best time for assumptions, mortgage assumptions. And actually, that's the subject matter I'm going to bring next week, mortgage assumptions. Meaning, um, right now, there's been multiple different um, property owners that have locked in interest rates at 1.5%, 2%. I have some mortgages that are 1.5% that are interest rate for the next five years. I locked in last year. And so if I was motivated to sell, well, I have a really good mortgage that someone could assume. Right, so I can still get my price, the price that I'm looking for, and I can still tap in to, um, to uh, you know, as a buyer, I can tap into the seller's mortgage and mixed in with VTBs because the sellers are not going to have a choice. In fact, you got to find out. Obviously, you got to find out the the motivated ones. Okay. So what do we do now? You see, I'm giving you all the goods right now. I'm going to give you all the goods because I live for this stuff. Not only that, this is the kind of things that I'm going to be doing. I'm out there. Even today, I spend all day on the phone talking to agents. I'm out there. It's hunting season, baby. I'm out here, right? And so discovery calls. Now is the time for discovery calls before realtors wouldn't even give you the time of day, right? You would call the realtor and they're like, do you have cash and you're like well no i'm uh, i don't have all the cash right now they're like click now it, it's reversed right now they're going to call you back they're going to answer your phone and so that discovery call becomes so important what i want to know is d-o-m days on market days on market is going to give me an indicator of where they're at in, in terms of motivation the debt on the property how much what are the mortgages on the property and what is the interest rate that they're paying maybe they have a really good mortgage and so I don't I, I'd rather assume a, a really good mortgage with really good terms than trying to get a new mortgage at six percent and then ultimately why are they selling what's their motivation what 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 is it you know it, you know mixture with days on market and why are they selling maybe there's a great opportunity there now a lot of the times for the next month I'm simply going to be calling making my calls making my calls and I'm going to be checking in I'm going to be checking in on these realtors on these properties hey you know what's going on uh, walkthroughs hey, this is if there's ever been a time for walkthroughs this is the time because that walkthrough is going to be it's going to create deal flow it's going to give you a deeper understanding of the motivation, the, the, the condition of the property, maybe some, some opportunities, and it's going to help you build your network. And then ultimately, it all comes down in the way you manage, management of your deals. You need to have a really good management system. You need to have spreadsheets with all of the different deals that you're, you're looking at. You need to highlight and categorize all the different deals from important to 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 the to, to the ones that are weak, and you need to be in a position where you now know who you're going to follow up on. Uh, back in April of twenty, uh, back in April of uh, of twenty twenty, I would call people, and they would say, "Well, you know, we don't know. Like, we're just going to wait it out, and we're going to see what happens with this with, with this piece of real estate." I would call them back twenty days later, and they're like, "Listen." We just want it. We just want to get rid of this property. And so, the, as the time goes, the motivation changes. You just need to be in that position where you already have all the intel on that property, so you can go in and take action. And so, this is. I hope this helps. You know, uh, these are all things that we talked about back in April of 2020. And you guys can, for fun, you can get, you can go watch that video. But uh, I am. Uh, I'm, I'm having a good time here. I hope you guys had a good time. I'm going to take the, the video off here.